if I were to start drop shipping from scratch in 2024, here is exactly what I would do. A step-by-step -step guide covering everything from building a Shopify website, apps I would include, to getting free traffic to your website to get those first few sales without spending any money on ads, then moving over to paid ads. Just everything that I think is important that you need in place before you even consider launching a business on Shopify. This is specifically tailored towards e-commerce and dropshipping. It certainly is relevant if you've got your own brand and stock and things like that. But this is everything that I use in my business today that is incredibly important and that I think even new businesses should use as well. Now, just before we do jump into this, I wanna give a quick mention to my free Discord community. We've had this for about two years now. There's over 450 members in there. We have different sections. You can chat with people. You can chat with myself. You can chat with other experts. We've got a general chat, Google ads, Facebook ads, product research, email marketing, and a place you can share your results as well. It's a community full of like-minded people. If you've ever got a burning question about e-commerce or Google ads or drop shipping or anything, you can ask it in here. I'm active every single day and it's just a great place to be. A very good community. So the link for this Discord channel will be in the description down below. Now, moving on to Shopify, this is where most successful e-commerce businesses are either built or are even moving to now. I follow the owners and the founders of Shopify on Twitter and the amount of tweets I see of them saying, you know, this big brand is moving to Shopify. It's incredible. And Shopify has been a big part of my journey. I've used it, I believe, since 2015. And it's just brilliant. And I am an official partner with Shopify. So if you use the link in the description, you can get three free days of Shopify. Then your first month is only going to cost you a pound or a dollar. So if you're watching this and you haven't yet made a Shopify account, definitely take advantage of this offer because you're saving yourself at least $30 on your first month subscription. So the link to that will also be down below in the description. Now, an important thing to take note is going to be the apps you're going to want to use to get things going on your store. I've made a list of a few. I use all of these already. One of them is going to be the Google Shopping Feed app by Simprosis. Now, I prefer this to Shopify's own Google sales channel. It's just more reliable, it's more consistent, and it's got it's got a lot more features than Shopify's basic Google app. If you want to sell on Google, if you want to link your products to a Merchant Center account, this is definitely the app you want to use, especially in the future. It allows you easily to submit your products for multiple countries, meaning you can run Shopify ads in multiple countries. I don't think you can do that with Shopify's Google channel, but I wouldn't know because I don't use it. Anyway, moving on is going to be some sort of AI search bar for your website. I mentioned this in my video that I actually recorded yesterday and the importance of having a prominent search bar on your website really will boost conversion rate, sales volume. It will just do it will do no harm to your store and it will just be an incredible asset to have. And the app I use is called Rapid Search AI. You can search this on the App Store. It's a little yellow logo, I think, but any app, you know, there's probably hundreds out there, any app that's going to allow a search bar to be visible at all times on your website, a search bar that automatically generates results when people start typing. I don't believe there are any themes that have this built in. So definitely get a, get an app. It's worth it. I think for me, I pay $100 a month for this app, but I think I showed a screenshot on my video I made yesterday in the last 30 days on a $100 app. It's generated me $12,000 in extra revenue. So it's a no-brainer and you know a side sort of statistic that I always like to mention people who search on your website are three or four times more likely to convert so bear that in mind and especially if you've got a large catalog of products you really are missing out if you haven't got something like this on your store looks reviews again you can use your own preference but any app that is going to allow you to import customer reviews to your product pages you can display product reviews on your home page collection page check out wherever you want but mainly you want to start showing product reviews on your product pages because new people come into your website they're not going to trust you and you want to build that trust as best you can and there's no better way of doing that than showing customer reviews and as you build your customer base you can start you know email sequences where you ask your own customers for video reviews photo reviews and just building up that social proof and just trust really is important for 
the long-term success of your brand really. Next up is gem pages. Incredibly important if you want to start testing out different landing pages. I use gem pages a lot when I'm running Facebook ads. You know, I don't always direct my traffic from Facebook ads to a product page. I have gem pages that I've made myself that are essentially collection pages with a bit more detail, a bit more going on, and that's not possible with a standard Shopify collection page. I use gem pages for product pages as well. You know, it just gives you that extra bit of creativity to really produce a high quality and high converting landing page, something that a standard Shopify theme isn't gonna let you do. I pay $29 a month for gem pages and the amount of features you get, you know, the return on investment you're gonna get off gem pages or any other page builder app really is, is incredible. So not necessarily something you're gonna need from the first sort of point you start but once you start to get traffic into your store it's definitely something worth testing because you might have 100 people come to a product page on your website and not a single one place in order but if those same 100 people went to a gem page or a custom built product page with a lot more information a clearer layout you might be surprised two or three of those users may have converted so once you start getting traffic into your store definitely something you want to test and arguably in my opinion most importantly is Clavio email marketing software if you haven't got email marketing set up on your store then you seriously are missing out on a ton of revenue for my businesses email alone is accountable for I think about 25% of my overall revenue so that's 25% of my revenue that's coming just from email marketing and that's not just email marketing in the terms of you know campaigns and sale campaigns being sent to people it's linked with flows as well and if we quickly just move on to this section here, uh, and we'll skip to the above in a minute, but Clavio is very important because you can set up things called flows. I've made dedicated videos on how to do this. If you need any sort of one-to-one -one help with this, please do uh, drop me a message on Discord or Instagram. But you've got things like customer thank you flows. So when a customer places an order on your website, instead of just the standard thank you email, they'll be entered then into a sequence of emails. They might receive three more follow-up emails over the next two weeks, upselling, cross-selling other versions of their products or other products that you offer that will complement the one they've purchased. And you'll be surprised at the amount of customers that come back and place a second or third order from this. Abandoned cart flows get incredibly important. You're gonna to wanna to capture those people that head to checkout, fill out their information and don't place an order. Abandoned cart flows are a great way to bring these customers back to your site to complete their orders. Browse abandonment. If someone comes to your website and signs up to an email but doesn't do anything else other than look at a few products, they will still receive emails based on the products they've viewed on your store. Often overlooked but a very good way to bring people back to your website with relevant emails because Clavaya will know what products they've viewed and you can then tailor that email towards that specific product. And finally, one of the most important ones is gonna be the pop-up and sign-up flow. When new users are coming to your website, if you don't have a pop-up or some sort of email capture form, again, you seriously are missing out. These sort of flows are designed, you know, once someone enters their email, they'll be entered into a flow or a sequence where they receive, again, I believe my pop-up flow, about four emails over seven days, enticing them with, you know, a discount, showing them a variety of products, and again, it's just a great way to bring people back to your website to place an order and a good way to offer incentives, free shipping, discounts and things like that. So before you do anything else that I mentioned in this video, email marketing, get it done. If you need help, message me. It really is so important. Okay, now all of you need to at some point create your website. You need to design the layout, import a load of graphics and choose a font, colors and things like that. A lot of people spend too much time on the home page but 95 percent of your traffic won't ever see the home page because they'll probably land directly on product pages so don't spend all your time and effort on that home page as tempting as it is it really isn't as important as what a product page would look like so a very important point is don't rush website creation if you can i would opt for a paid theme they just instantly look better they have a lot more features than free shopify themes I personally associate free themes with scammy dropshipping sites and a lot of people probably will pick up on that quite easily now, especially in 2024. So if you have a spare £200, $200 or however much they are these days, 
invest in a paid Shopify theme. They're all pretty good. They're all pretty customizable. So it doesn't really matter what one you go for, but they are just better than a free theme. Now, a good example of taking your time is when I launched my UK e-commerce business in 2020. It took me a good two weeks or so to add 50 products. I think I launched with about 45 to 50 products. Now, people by then, okay, I've added my products. They'll be like, all right, let's launch ads. Let's launch Facebook ads. I didn't do that. I spent another four weeks mastering, you know, the appearance of my website, the functionality of it, making sure it was fast, everything worked, and it was just the best it could possibly be because I thought I'm not wasting any money on paid ads until this truly is the best version it can be because otherwise I'm leaving money on the table and conversion rate could suffer if I'm presenting people with a terrible looking website. So don't rush into these things. Yes, it's boring. Yes, I completely understand once you've got your products there, you want to launch, you want to get those sales, but invest some time and potentially money if you need help in, with a designer to make your website as best it could possibly be. Yes, over time, you're going to continue to make changes to optimize your conversion rate and things like that, but there's no point wasting money on paid ads until your site really is looking as best it could be. Now, a popular question for beginners, should I have a niche store? Should I have a general store? They're both very good options. Uh, niche is great if you can launch with 30, 40 products, but general does give you that extra bit of uh, breathing space and ability to test products, obviously, in a variety of categories because that's what a general store is. Now, as your business grows, if you have a general store, you can then start to lean in and develop the most popular categories. That's pretty much the gist of both my businesses, my UK, USA business, they started off as general stores. I tested quite a few categories on both, but now I've leaned into sort of the top two categories on both. And they're now the primary categories that really have strengthened the brand and scaled it. So, you know, don't feel like you're spreading yourself too thin by testing a fair few sort of different collections and categories to begin with. But on the flip side, if you can start a niche store with a good amount of products 30 plus then that equally is a great place to start so don't think you you know there's a wrong or right answer here that's just my personal opinion on that you know the only way you're going to truly find out is testing one or the other now once you have your website ready apps installed you think it's as best as it can possibly be you're going to want to start bringing traffic to your store most people would instantly jump to paid ads google facebook tiktok Something you can spend time on, I've made a ton of videos on this in the past, is focusing on free traffic to your website. A great way of doing this is finding your target audience on Instagram or TikTok is potentially another good place. I personally used to use Instagram. Just start reaching out to people who look like your ideal customers and offer them some sort of incentive to be a part of your customer base, promote your business or place an order. A great way of doing this is setting up your own sort of mini affiliate program. Give people you know, a 50% discount code and say, hey, if you place an order on my website with this 50% discount code, we will then give you your own promotional code to share with your followers. And then every X amount of orders your code generates, you will receive a gift voucher or x percentage of commission or something like that there's so many different ways you can do it but what you're getting there you're getting an initial order from a customer but they're then going to promote your product for you because you're giving them a good incentive don't feel like you need to install some sort of shopify app to set up an affiliate program you don't necessarily need to and this is just a great way especially if you are on a very limited budget it really is a great way to get those first few orders in get the momentum and get people promoting your business for you without really you paying a penny for it. Now, obviously, there's going to come a time where you want to start paid ads. You've got Google, TikTok, Pinterest, Bing, Facebook. You know, there's so many different routes you can go with paid ads. Now, I really think one at a time is the best play here because especially if you've got a limited budget, you don't want to be testing TikTok, Google and Facebook all at the same time because you might have to split your budget three ways there and you're not going to get anywhere with any of the platforms. Now, there's no right or wrong answer of which one you should start with, but way to view this, I'd say, if you're in the position where you've got an approved active Google Merchant Center account, I would pursue that first because that's quite difficult in itself. And I'm sure many of you may know it's quite difficult to actually get your Merchant Center approved. So if you've got one, 
that really is a valuable asset to your business and I would use that to start running uh, Google shopping campaigns as your first sort of means of testing paid traffic. It's a lot easier to burn through cash on TikTok and Facebook whereas Google you can be more cautious and the types of people using Google it's intent based search you're going to instantly be showing your ads to people who are searching for your product and this is again exactly what I did with the UK business started with Google once it was profitable I reinvested those profits into other channels such as Meta I now use Pinterest I now use uh, Microsoft slash Bing ads as well so I didn't start all of those ad platforms at the same time I started with Google moved to Facebook and then introduced in the background Pinterest and Bing they don't, they probably only account for sort of five percent of my revenue but they're highly profitable um, but the point is here focus on one at a time do not spread yourself too thin now that is essentially the sort of steps I would take to launch a successful Shopify business whether it's drop shipping or building your own brand and these are the steps that I took again you know four years ago with my UK business like I've kept saying this video is a great example I am actually opening a few spots for one-on-one -on -one mentorship in Q4 of this year I've had a few people message me already and a couple people join if you want more one-to-one -one help from myself where we can have one-on-one -on -one calls and things like that we can focus on building a Google ad strategy for you uh, meta ad strategy we can help I could help you introduce other platforms like I've mentioned Pinterest being anything that I've essentially used to scale my brands to over 10 million dollars in sales over the last couple of years I can essentially share with you help grow your business whether you're on Shopify or another platform but like I've always said it's not just about the paid ads it's about building a long-term brand that you could potentially exit in a few years time and again like I always say it's not just about building a rubbish little Shopify dropshipping store it's something that you want to be proud of you want a successful business you're going to want you know a loyal happy customer base which dropshippers just can't achieve so if you need one-on-one -on -one help with this get in touch either with on discord or drop me a message on instagram i'm only going to probably be taking on three or four more people for this because i simply don't have the time for any more than that so feel free to reach out on instagram we'll sort something out and yeah if you've got any questions about this video leave a comment down below other than that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.